So, have you seen like alley oops number one this week? Yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Art Fine. Uh, welcome to the Large Poker Party. Hey, uh, man. The, uh, sorry, I gotta save that. This is the, uh, oh, well, I forgot it. Uh, Richard Simmons show of rock, really. Because, uh, you know how Richard Simmons started out his uh, exercise show with exercise and they get, gradually lost it. There was no exercise. By the end, he was just cooking things and showing dresses. It's and like stuff. the poker routine. Yeah, it's like there's no poker in the poker party anymore. So. I'm Art Fine, uh, welcoming you to the Poker Party, introducing you to a, a, a fine bunch of favorites. Five, count them, five. Same price of admission, you get one extra person today. First guy ends Gene Scalati. Gino. Hi. Gino oh, wrote the hi. catalog of Cool. Thank you. That's right. No, no, it's, not, it's just a fact. Oh, it's I true. I didn't say yeah. it was any good. Yeah. I just said <laughs> it's you did it. It's a fact he's grateful true. for, though. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Thank you. Gino, uh, radio guy, guy around town, and probably best known for being on this show. Uh, next to him, we got oh, Paul Bowden. Paul. Yeah. It's good you can make it down here. You took time off your uh, busy schedule. Busy schedule. I had to block out a lot of stuff, celebrating and everything. You're a landlord now, aren't you? Well, yeah, sort of. Yeah. That's like terrific. Go along that whole Reagan era type thing. I don't what? Know. You know, money's a whole deal now. And oh no! Oh, oh no! No, I just, I just came in. It's, uh, it's, it's nothing I've ever done. Okay. Nothing so, too important. No. Okay. Uh, you don't have to know me. Next to that's Christine. Next to him. Next to me is Christine McKenna. <laughs> Christine uh, works at the LA Times and numerous other places. Uh, where else have you been uh, moonlighting for lately? Um, yeah. Well, I've been writing press kits. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is known as prostitution yeah, in yeah. the writing circle. Um, so, you know, doing a pre I've been stuff. writing for Musician Magazine, actually. Oh, those, those are New York guys, aren't they? Yes. So they want you to insult the little LA people? Yeah, do they, as do they ask you to? A little, yeah. You've seen, you've seen the slant of those New York music yeah. magazines. Yeah. Okay, and, uh, but you like New York, don't you? I like New York. Yeah, I mean, I like it too, but I don't I like love it. L.A., but I like New York. Good. I'm with <laughs> Next to her, a uh, native of, uh, where are you from, Dick? North Carolina? Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Some place where they sell ham. This is uh, Dick Blackburn. Uh, Dick uh, writes for movies. He was in Eating Raul. He wrote Eating Raul. Any other movies, Dick? No, that's the only one of note. Oh, there's a uh, couple others. No, there's Lamar, but we did this on a different show. We don't want Stunt to rock. We got a lot of, we got a lot <laughs> I of, want to hear all that. We got a lot of yeah, new material. Wait a minute, though. They eat ham everywhere. Yeah, but in particular, they got this special Virginia That's where Tom Wolfe was born. Yeah. 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 Right. But let's not get into ham. Let's not get this is not a clipping yeah. show, even though you started it. Yeah, actually, speaking of clippings, we like to uh, investigate the local uh, media, or particularly the written media, since we can't pick up a TV show and review it. So we're going to have to look at some stuff. Now, uh, I wanted to get into the Paul Schaefer situation. I, now, this is a thing from the LA Herald about Paul Schaefer schmoozing with America's Hepis cat. Now, the guy claims to be America's Hepis cat. I don't mind that, I mean, if it's a joke. But these guys kind of take it seriously. But I, I realize the reason that a lot of the local media guys think he's America's Hepis cat is, have you seen most newspaper writers? I mean, <laughs> well, relative to them, he is a fairly hep guy. It, it's also widespread. There's a piece on him in the, the current spin, which starts with the same assumption. It's like, everyone agrees Paul Schaefer is America's hippest guy. Uh -huh. so they do all believe it somehow. I'm kind of missing the yeah. joke here. Uh, but there's something in here also. Uh, there's a lot of interesting and, and debatable points in this article. But one of the things that we got into on the phone one day was that uh, in, in, the, in the Schaefer Viva Schaefer Vegas TV show, which I liked very much, by the way. Yeah, because yeah. of Sam Butera, I mean, it. I felt bad. I felt like they were following me around and then wrote a script about it. Because, I mean, where did I go on my wedding night? Uh, funny you should ask. I went to see uh, <laughs> Louis Prima's yeah. Wildest at the, you know, yeah. at the, the Four Queens. You know. That's where you went on your wedding night. Yeah, on the way. Well, we cut through there from the Clark County courthouse oh. on the way over to the Union Plaza. There was Louis Prima's band, Sans Louis. I've always course. wondered the answer to that question. Yeah. And now yeah, now where I went on his wedding <laughs> night? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so this whole Sh Lloyd Price used to ask Vegas thing on Butera, you know, I've been digging Butera for years. As a matter of fact, when I went to see him at the Trap two weeks ago, there, there was uh, Shea for the boys. But uh, one of the things in the TV show is uh, him coming across a Blues Brothers clone. And it Schaefer. Says, yeah, yeah. He comes across these two guys oh, that are doing Blues Brothers, sh Blues Brothers show, and it says the next stop was a Blues Brothers clone act. It made Schaefer sick. Well, to a lot of us, the original Blues Brothers made us sick. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I don't know about you, but I thought they were a clone and pretty rotten at it. Yeah, I mean, pretty, I pretty unnecessary. I don't yeah, know. yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. And, uh, but Schaefer's upset at the inauthenticity of uh, uh, cloning I mean, a clone. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's gone too far. I mean, you know, John was real. No, I guess he wasn't really. I mean, and he wasn't any good. Yeah, I no. wish he couldn't sing. 
I mean, it's a shame they put out records. I mean, it, well, he's supposed to be hip because Letterman pronounced it so. Isn't that right? I mean, Letterman told everybody no, that he no, was. I guess he's that supposed to be hip because he's always played fairly hip songs or you know, okay, four bars Phil of Spectre fairly hip songs. Yeah. He knew Phil Spector. Yeah, he was involved with some of those. Wait a minute. Records. I don't what? Think so. no, 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 no. In fact, that's, that's the travesty that Art yeah. and I have discussed really? many times. No. I'd like to point that out right now, and that is. Paul Schaefer, whatever you feel about it, one way or the other, I don't know. But the point is, he got a great honor in that Leader of the Pack musical about the early days of songwriting mm -hmm. in New York. Oh, yeah. He got to play Philzy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, people would die for that honor. Now, does he deserve to play <laughs> Phil? Well. You be the judge. Well, but no, no, I don't, better. I don't think he knew Phil. Oh, I don't know. I mean, well, we interviewed Sharkey. Ronnie Spector in Interview yeah. Magazine a couple months ago, and I got the impression somehow that he was, you know, part of the family from way back. He's only 37 years old. That's part, that's almost like yeah, me. Yeah, but everybody was he's supposed to be Canada. like 12 when they were born. <laughs> Phil Spector. No, that's sad. <laughs> yeah, he's from, he's from Canada. He's they go uh, great comedians, but I mean. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. I picked up the PSA magazine on the plane the other day. Where were you I was doing? excited because I thought it was another picture of Jack Smith for my collection, you know? Because, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, some guy oh. from it the sure uh, looks Art just Center. Like him. But, I mean, I've, I have collected over 100 Jack Smith color is photos now from, the, from the Sunday yeah. Times. Because it's so exciting to pick up that Sunday Times magazine every week and see Jack. A, a new pose, you know, this time. It's like you can make up a nice composite from that one with a pipe and with a sailor's hat on, another with an eye patch. I mean, don't you feel better about seeing Jack every Sunday in the, in the Times rather than just reading him? Uh, do I don't read them or look at yeah, them. Okay. Hey, well, see, I got. Well, I mean, where were you going? I mean, here's, here's. I mean, Surprise you're always going someplace. I don't know. Right? Where I was I going? Yeah. Going? Oh, a PSA. I have. I compulsively read calendar because I have to see who's making movies that I'm not making mm. movies, <laughs> and it upsets me. And then I go through my little masochism, and then I have yeah. some coffee, and then I can face yeah. Sunday. Uh, let's go. Let's Strange. go. Speaking of the Times Ritual. calendar, now we won't yeah. make fun of Christine now because she's oh, here. Go but ahead, how about please. some other people? It'd be kinder no. to do it while I'm here. Uh, We're going to be leaving pretty soon, so let's get on. Well, we'll get to Christine in a minute. Uh, uh, Paul will. But oh, here's I already thing. see it. You already headed no, out with her in the green room. I, I. All right. So here's the thing we, we were enjoying a couple months ago, actually already. Uh, this is the Lori E. Pike, who I take it is a reborn. Is, do we know this? Uh, I would gather that from her from piece in the calendar. And it's this whole thing about how I, I found happiness through you too. Well, good. <laughs> That's good. I mean, you could find happiness through the group you too. That's all but right. But through an me. alarm clock. I yeah, mean, I mean, it's, it's all right. But then she says, uh, "I met a girl, and we, we both explained how much we liked you too. Then I told her how I'd embraced a Christian faith of the whole born again variety, and then later is a bunch of other stuff about you too. Mm -hmm. Now, it would be like me telling you, Gene, I." I found Jerry Lee one day in 1957. I heard a whole lot of shaking going on. And by the way, I like being Jewish. And, uh, and you know that he really, that left hand is really good, and the right hand isn't really, really as important. The rumbling, Ray Balls of Fire was quite good, but of course I go to Temple every Sunday. <laughs> then, I mean, what's that got to do with anything? Well, you're absolutely right. That's right. right. Nothing. You got a, you got a now, there are also letters about her, there was a, a girl her that wrote it. Yeah, I, don't, I yeah. can't find it anymore. But yeah. you were talking about that same syndrome with, uh, did you have a Wilman? Well, of course, feature? I'm talking about Chris Wilman. You know, he writes in your paper as well, Christine, and he has a feature here. <laughs> I didn't know he was a stockholder. Yeah. Not long ago. He has a feature here. There's any sitters work there. Well, no, there aren't. He had a review here of Howard Jones, young fellow, I guess a British guy. And uh, Chris has kind of a, uh, Chris Wilman has kind of a heavy, I guess you'd say, fundamentalist bias, which comes out in these reviews in strange ways. And it came out in this one here. He says, True, Jones's simple, soul-searching songs and bouncy, non-threatening manner may appear trite and innocuous but by more sophisticated standards, but at least he is dealing with ethics and values. Yeah. Now, yeah. you kind of expect that from your, your pop people. Now, he goes on to say, other than a virulent vegetarian anthem, Jones's was all pretty pleasant stuff, often characterized by the four H's. And those are described as... Hedonism. No, no. no. <laughs> the four H's, humanitarianism, oh. humanism, hopefulness and haircuts. He says, not much there to engage adults, but who cares? It's like, what is why it? are these yeah, four yeah. elements brought up? I mean, and wh wh why wouldn't an adult find something interesting in hopefulness or humanitarianism? Are those only kids' concerns? You know, I guess we should get Chris on here. Chris, what happened? Well, that couldn't be written in the Midwest, because 4-H's would mean the 4-H club. That's <laughs> right, health and something else. Yeah, all yeah. for animal husbandry. Yeah, or Northern California, they have it up there. Well, while we're doing the, uh, the uh, LA Times, now here's a Bob Hilburn, uh, you know Bob, right? Yeah. All right, so here's something, but this will relate back to, back to you, Christine. Uh, this is, uh, Bob was doing one of his unusual top tens. You hardly ever see that in the paper. And uh, it says uh, something about uh, the music of today. It says, that means you are sentenced to an endless diet of the airheaded dance floor sensibilities of K-Power FM, where Stacey Q is the model of excellence. Now, 
what do you use, what do you look for in dance music yourself? I, this is airheaded dance music. You're probably looking for intellectual, Sub thoughtful <laughs> dance music. I, just, I mean, every kind of time I see a w yeah. record of Wooly Bully, I just smash it to pieces. Right. Right. I look yeah. for something more intelligent. Something that has analyze. ethics and values. Something that has stop time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, didn't you do something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, the Sheila E thing. That was, that was another thing where you I said, hate that "Well, I, I know." You can hate. I, it. I know you can hate it when you say, it, "You know, it's basically what, a, what, a what dance." What did I hate it on? Yeah. Well, well, you said it was. I know why I hated it. You said it, it was because like because it's just like a Prince record. If I want a Prince record, no, I no, buy no, a no. Prince it's, it's not. I mean, but no, you said it was. It was also like a a, a dance sort of thing where you really couldn't sit down and listen to it. I didn't say that. Oh, you did too. I defy you, you to prove that I said you that. You lied. I, I was on the phone. I was on the phone. You lied. Calling everybody up. <laughs> I say, hey! I say, hey! Did you read this? No, I was called, no. I no. called up people all over town. I remember town. what I said in that review, and my main well, I could be wrong, was that it's like she kind of like abandoned her whole identity once Prince got his paws on her, and he turned into just like a female clone of himself. Yeah, but see, that, that has no, I mean, to me, that has nothing to do with the record. See, you go more to do what the what what this little but midget like from Minnesota does. Yeah, yeah, but you, what you said in the review, you said like. It's a, you said basically you really can't sit down and listen to it. It's no basically way would a I dance said that. No, no. Oh, okay, maybe because I, I don't think the only point of music is to sit around and ponder it seriously. You know, I, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you're, I, you know, because I okay, maybe you didn't say. It. Maybe I just picked that up. See, I, you know, I'm, I'm Next like. Next time that. I see you, I'll bring a clip of that. Okay, well, I got it at wow. home. I saved it. No way. I, oh, I did you too. Save I saved things? everything. You're I, a sick man. I, I, no, I'm, 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 I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. <laughs> okay, wow, more time stuff here. This is good. Uh, here's a, uh, okay, this is an article about uh, a month ago about the, the record business, business. It's on the rebound. This is in the, the uh, <coughs> business section of the Times. CDs, new music, put recording industry back on profit track. Now, this guy, Needle Setter, sometimes has some sense, but this one, I mean, he interviews these guys at the record companies, and what do they say? We like the record business, and we think it's doing great. <laughs> oh, let me write that down. Your, your company is doing well. Oh, and you're, you're expecting more hits. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> and, you know, you could have just taken handouts. Wait, what executive said that? Do you well, for example, to even ones? troubled, ca he says, everybody's doing great. Even troubled <laughs> capital industries, EMI, currently going through a management restructuring, expects a dramatic improvement. I mean, that's proof that they're doing well and that we're going to do well. Otherwise, they go <laughs> chapter 11. You don't question do. that. You just accept it. You say, okay. Now, one interesting quote here, too, is from this guy, Krasnow, or is he at, you know? He's the head of Electra. 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 And a very okay. perceptive man. I head. think so. Okay, so he says it's different now. The people who are buying records are different. It's not just some kid with long hair and an earring uh, buying a Grateful Dead album. Well, that's an interesting analogy. But they haven't had a Grateful Dead album. Have, they haven't had an album in nine years. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a very apt analogy to use for uh, Mr. Krasnow. Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously on top of it as a president of a major record company. He kinda, he's got his hands on that. Okay, thing. the audience is buying all kinds of music. Now, here's yeah. his, his take on what's going on. The yeah. customer who buys an album by The Cure will also buy a Linda Ronstadt album <laughs> and a Barbara Streisand album and one by Reuben Blades. No who is this nut that's going in to buy those records? Gift all raffle, I mean, man. possibly you. you <laughs> I, I, I buy the first. I buy the first one and the last one, but I, I, I have to shine. Well, I know you like Streisand and stuff. You do? You know. Oh yeah. Oh, she, oh, she's a great singer, man. Great but, you know, Never, never. You know, the music. Her records have never done anything for me. I, I couldn't sit. I rather listen to Johnny Mathis if I wanted to get into a makeout mood. She's not you know? Freddie Mercury, is the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't oh, comment yeah. on that stuff anyway because we don't buy records, right? We, I buy we, get them, we get them free, or you go down to the discount no, bins no, and no, pick no, them no, up. I You're not buying records. Them. I still buy. You buy really? Like I buy price. Uh, sure, sometimes. I buy records. I never get records. But I, uh, but mostly I buy you singles. I, I buy singles. Really? Yeah, but you're amazing. You're really I know. I get. Time. Yeah, I get like 20 heavy metal albums a week. <laughs> but you that's trade them in for something you want, and you don't pay for them. No, I trade them in for money for gas and stuff. But you know, you guys all listen to the radio. Third I haven't listened to the radio in 10 years. I listen to K Day every day. K-Day? Yeah. I listen to uh, K-Power 106. Yeah. Is that the wave? No, 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 the wave is, that's, 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 that's gone. <laughs> that's what is the wave? I don't understand. The wave is the no DJs, but it's all like easy listening. But no, what it is, it's, it's for like, people it's like, in the boneyard. It's kind of hip, <laughs> it's kind of, they pick sort of semi-hip acts, but they pick the mellowest cut by every one of them. You yeah. know, like they'll have a Brian Ferry song and, uh, you know, The Cure, or stuff really? like that. Really? But it's, it's all the most like homogenized, bland stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So, so you know, this you, would, you, won't, you won't hear the killer on, on, <laughs> on the way. No. no, I don't, but I would like to point out while we're on the subject of the wave, the wave, of course, used to be KMET and some of the disc jockeys from that station now suing the station mm -hmm. for the way they were summarily dismissed to make way for the wave. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a disc jockey's Jim Ladd, David Perry. These guys were on KMET, and one of them, in supporting uh, his suit against the wave, he says, the real blow to me, was the way in which he was fired, he says, the real blow to me was the cold calculation involved, Perry said, about the way he was fired. He says, most, people are most people are fired gleefully. Right. And, you know, but dig this, a, dig this. Perry nice said, to us, KMET wasn't just a job, it was a mission from God. <laughs> Something we really believed in, that's what's made all this stuff so damn depressing. Well, you know what he believed in? A mission wow. from God. A mission God. from God to work at KMET. He, he believed yes. in that. He believed in that. We'll call this mission Exhibit from A, shall we? <laughs> Do you think the janitor felt that way, you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, Cleaning out that. the Larry cakes there, you know? Oh, Allah, thank you so much. You know? What a privilege. Oh, he looks quite what a station. defiant. No, no, you know, it got me with Kia Power, man. I you don't like, I, you like? No, they these know. these guys have long hair and earrings. They played that Madonna song. Oh, just one, one time. Isla Bonita? Bonita. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just so I buy it. Grateful Dead. You like yeah. the stuff on it? I love that stuff. Oh, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's as far as, you know, the... It's, it's got a pulse. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. But I really listen to K-Day because they play all the, the sort of rap stuff. Yeah, yeah you know, that, that's and, why I don't listen to it. Yeah, yeah, they they'll play it to death, but, you know, I like it like that. So, Gina, you listen to K-Power. Power 106, yeah. Jay Thomas. Uh, the uh, things we apologize for him on the back of the buses. Yeah. What kind he of offends people. Play? He offended my Urban. people today, as a matter of fact, this morning. Like yeah, Facebook he went to see one? The Untouchables. Yeah, I, yeah everything. Yeah. Which one we like? Jay Thomas offended my people this morning. I want to point out my people. Who this are is your the people? best we can aspire to, the Italo-Americans. <laughs> bon Jovi sells seven million records. We have to put up with him. But seriously, uh, Jay Thomas went to see The Untouchables, and he said this morning that it was, you know it was a good gangster movie because these were the names of some of the actors. And he went down, you know, Joe Joe Manicotti and <laughs> Sam Bonamati, and, and that's very that's really funny. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. riot, you know. We're all yeah. gangsters. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I don't, yeah, but I'm gonna go see it, man. Because you know. No, you go right ahead and see it. Well, yeah. you're gonna see De Niro's it. Gene. In it. Yeah, De Niro's Sounds in it. Sounds I saw the previews. I don't want to see it. I think it's oh, so really. You're, you're not it's an anti-Mediterranean it. sensualist tract. In other words, <laughs> oh, I don't want to get into okay, it. Okay, you know about this. No, Al Capone equals, you know, just, just for, for the semiotics of the thing, Al Capone equals the guy who gets you the booze, guy who gets you the broads, the guy who lets you gamble. He's the sensualist Mediterranean. The guy who wears <laughs> silk next to his skin. Yeah, right, he right. knows what to do. And then the so other guy, everywhere. then right. it's like this yeah. waspy, puritanical American, or Kevin Costner, <laughs> don't do that. Now, I saw the previews, that's all I've seen so far. You want to see that picture? Go see it, I don't I'm care. I'm going to go see it, man. I'm going to that Al Capone's kind of yeah. presented in a, in a positive light. He may be. I just saw the previews. And that was a, kind of a revolutionary thing. You know, to present yeah. Elliot Ness is kind of a, a shrub, yeah, it, and it, Capone it is a good shows, guy. See, I've Maybe. read two or three books about Al Capone, and I. Oh yeah. Oh. And, 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 and there's a new movie. It has a scene in it where he's talking about something, and guys, you know, he wants his guys to be on his team and stuff. And one of the guys, I think he finds out that the guy's a rat or something like that. He beats him with a baseball bat. Ew. Yeah. That's why you want to see. Sure. <laughs> Good sure. reason. Yeah, you got you know, sex and violence. Right, yeah. Speaking of uh, racial <coughs> slurs, while we're at, isn't that a girl, Rachel Slurs? Rachel Slurs or Rachel? There's a name. There's a name, Rachel Slurs. Rachel slurs I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. But uh, like speaking of racial slurs, now, now what about this thing about blacks not being buoyant? I mean, oh, that, have like you ever Alice heard that? Oh, besides no, besides, besides him remember. saying it, what about, oh, yeah, what about yeah, yeah, Capanis right. saying it? What about the idea of it? If if black athletes exceed in everything else, but apparently not in swimming. I think that's what he's saying. Is that yeah. kind of there oh. maybe there's some kind of medical thing about that? I mean, I, I never heard of it before. I, you know, I, you know, I don't know what he was talking about. You know, because he heard of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was obvious that he didn't know what he was talking about. I mean, I sink. About. Do you sink? I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> I never learned. I, I go right to the bottom. <laughs> he made this comment in kind of a, a racial, racist what he got way. Fired? No, no, he was getting in trouble. They, they asking, they, they, they asking how come more black uh -huh. baseball players don't become managers, and. And what he said was, first he said they don't lack, they don't have the necessities. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and then he said, and you know, you know, blacks aren't good swimmers; they lack the buoyancy, which was his next. That's quote. why they can't be baseball managers because they're not. <laughs> no, oh, well, he was, he was connected. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He, There's deficiencies. Yeah. Oh, he's just kind and of covering. Just like they can't swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so. it may be true. Oh, that's not a very. Well, it's not that be true. Where, where does that come from? That it could be true. How does anyone even say that? I mean, he said, by and large, Jews aren't good football players. I think. I mean, they're not. Is that true? Is that true? Are there? I don't know. I'm sure they haven't gone that way. I mean, I don't know why. It's just maybe it's a natural thing. I don't know. 
I mean, how can anyone say that? Well, you're taking physical as, a, as opposed to cultural. I mean, there's a big difference there. See, see, see what Camp Canada is saying is that we didn't have the brains to be a baseball manager. Now, uh -huh. now how many brains does Tommy Lasorda have? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Left. I mean, look at his team. There's the guy that makes you sorry to be in the Taliban. That's what a meatball. Look at this guy's better. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. <laughs> He's, he's, he's pretty. It's like a Fabian yeah. thing. He's, he's Fabian of. Uh, Listen, okay, I want this. Here, here's the guy. Here's Chris. 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 Yeah. Oh, Chris Isaac. I'm glad you got that. I don't have my clipping here. But there's this guy in the in the weekly now. This Johnny Whiteside. I don't know who he is. But he had two consecutive reviews a month mm -hmm. ago. And then one was this guy Chris Isaac is coming down from Frisco, and then he is cool. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. he's Mr. Cool. What he's doing is real, and we we stand behind it. We think you should go see it. After that came a review of K.D. Lang, who's my favorite from Canada, and says, this girl comes with a bunch of hype saying that she's the next uh, so-and-so. She's the next Patsy Cline. If she can live up, oh, she says, this uh, she answers to the disgusting cowpunk uh, appellation, mm. you know, which is made up by writers. No person mm. ever said that. Yeah. Just rock writers. Yeah. And it's it is disgusting. So you want to slam her. I don't believe any of this hype, but I, I, I hope she does fairly well, because she certainly is well expected. And I was thinking, he never saw her. He just doesn't like the word cowpunk, and he assails her. Well, she's the greatest. She's the greatest, you know. And then, then after, before that comes Chris Isaac, who could be called the same thing. He's like this moody guy, takes pictures exactly like Elvis. He finds the Elvis picture, studies it, and poses mm -hmm. the same way. And, but then I realized that this right side guy is from Frisco. So Isaac is from Frisco, oh, mm -hmm. therefore oh, he's okay. Yeah. You know yeah. how it is up there. Well, you know writers. Yeah. Hard you, as you, know, I, you know, I'll tell you, you know, rock writer, mm -hmm. rock writers, whatever they are. I fell out with them once. What, I mean, uh, you know, I played, you know, I, I used to have a band called the Cheeks to Shake, and, you know, I you played, bet. you know, and I played, we, we, we played at the uh, Whiskey once, and this guy called us a rockabilly band. <laughs> who called you that? So, uh, who was, uh, the guy from the, uh, t uh, Harold, Ken Tucker. Ken Tucker? Ken, oh, yeah. he was a rockabilly? Kid, yeah, kid he, was a, he was a carpet bagger when he was here. He was in he's LA. On, he's on the radio on NPR now. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's viewing yeah. film. Tucker was a guy who would be here and write, uh, send these kind of uh, uh, articles back to the LA Village Voice about how stupid LA is. Now, mm, really? you know, he comes from Philadelphia, sits here in LA for a minute, looks around and says, ah, these stupid people, look at these people. Well, all <laughs> this punk all thing's not real. You it's know, like well, all I can colonies. say about Ken Tucker is a documentary about Al Green called The Gospel of Courtney, Al Green, and he's in it. And every time he's in it talking, everybody laughs. The whole audience. Man. Wow. Is that right? Yeah, the whole audience. So, Ken, if you're looking at this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm glad. Maybe. But we like you, Ken. But there's also I another, I'm another glad, thing maybe. about regional distinctions I just I was thinking of. Well, uh, this is a problem that everybody from LA has a problem as far as the rest of the world is concerned, especially if you're in a rock band. Because you go to New York and say, yeah, LA, you know. And, and no, we'll see, we'll see, LA, period. LA, not only rock bands, but, you know, their well, the sports team, the whole, you know, like, 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 like they hate, they're, everybody's jealous. So they can't, kind of yeah, they yeah. can't. They they don't live yeah. out here, and they think it's too easy. Uh huh. You know. They, well, they, when I went to when I went yeah. to uh, England with the Blasters, they they did very well there, but the reviews were. Uh, things along the lines of nothing to do with the music, but saying, "Here's a bunch of guys from LA. They're singing about labor unions yeah. and that crap. Ha! These guys who yeah. with their surf wagons and their boards and yeah. their beach yeah. bunnies. How can it, you know?" Yeah, yeah. 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 it's the same thing that Valley did. You remember all all the uh, LA punk mm -hmm. when they first write right. about it in Britain? You know, how, these guys with palm trees and stuff. How can they have a black flag? Yeah. Well, LA yeah. is like a Rorschach for people from all <laughs> over, <laughs> and they can just project their own yeah. fantasies and things on yeah. it. Because in the in the 60s, in the early 60s, for a while, if you were from Los Angeles, you were a total moron. And the New Yorker used to do that. Then by about the late 60s, if you were from LA, all of a sudden it was like positive because you could backpack. And nobody could do that in the East Village. Yeah. Yeah. So they were like sort of envious and said, wow, it's cool you're from LA. Oh, the whole thing changed. You know, now it's back again. You know, I still read that people say, how, yeah, you know, how can you stand? I mean, <laughs> living in LA? There's just, I, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I said, it's, people I said it's great, man. What are you talking about? People say that today. I was in New York only like um, about five months ago at a cocktail party in the you know Upper East 80s, whatever. That wasn't the and one with Hank Jaglum. No, 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 it was an, no, it was one of those type of things. But I mean, you know, they were saying like, really, some ladies, seriously, I, I mentioned something that t proved to her that I wasn't a total illiterate, you know, mm -hmm. mentioned a name. She went, huh? but I thought you were from Los Angeles. <laughs> and I mean, really, you know, they can still say that, so. Let's get back to New York for a second. I got something uh, hot on my mind. I got to talk to you for a second. On Saturday Night Live, there's this guy, G.E. Smith. 
Now, they've always <laughs> yeah. had bad bands on Saturday Still Night Live. Yeah. That's what I heard. Uh -huh. They've always had a lot, all through mm -hmm. the 70s, while the show was good, they had this jazz fusion shit. Oh, wait a minute, Paul Schaefer wasn't yeah, the right. original Yeah, right. And I used yeah. to look at this stuff and say, why don't they get some rock music on there, you know? So now they got these goons, and at that Smith guy, the <laughs> camera comes on me, he looks, goes, yeah, it's me. He does things like, I love the blues. <laughs> He does that. Like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm rocking now, boy. And I think there's just, a similarity. I, just, I actually turn away, like, oh, I can't look. I, I tell Susie to black the screen out until he's done. The I mean, there's some, it's it's they, such a they, mug they, push. No, I've got to tell you right something up. about that. It's really funny. This guy was telling me in Houston, you know, you should do one like, I love the blues. He's playing yeah. way down on the neck. Yeah. Well, this guy was like going to have to had to lend his guitar to something. You know, the scoop down there where they could play on the neck? Guy put plastic wood in it. Filled up the scoop so no one could play down on the neck. So he said, like, no, now hi hippies won't borrow my guitar. <laughs> right. Well, that's a technical joke. I don't even get it. Oh, well, it good. You can't play it, that. It was, yeah, you can't go. Like that. All right, yeah. when you were playing behind Roy the Boy the, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so the new Saturday Night Live band. Yeah, I yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, they, wait, no, like, actually, no, no, no. I take that back. He had his own band. His own band. That's Unlike, right, yeah, oh, dig this. Now, band. I saw Katie Lang on Carson and I saw her on a clip on Letterman. Mm -hmm. uh, very significant. On Carson, she had her band and it sounded great. On Letterman, Anybody who's a musician has to use the Schaefer band. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. Gene, you're a great guitarist, but out. You sing only. You yeah. can't play your instrument. Perhaps if you play it's Cavieri. No, you can't bring a band. You no, can't play your organ. No, when Waits was on there, he had, he had his, he own, his band. own band. Yeah. A yeah. lot of times, Schaefer said, oh, I know. sorry, you can't play. Yeah. We and have when the real heavyweights here. come on, like uh, Bruce Willis, he just gets up there with the harmonica and wails with that band of Schaefer's. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all, you know, I, I dig Bruce yeah. Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Music, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, he's cool. Who, Willis? Yeah, I mean, I dig his well, show. I, don't I think he's trying to be art myself. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't go out and buy a Bruce Willis record. I think he's no. trying to be Paul yeah. Schaefer, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but they're all about the same as far as music. It's all my idol is Peter Holm. The guy who's married yeah. to Joan Collins. Hey, I mean, did this guy used to be in some Swedish band? Yeah, he did. He was a rock guy. He was. Yeah. The guys yeah. that did Venus? No, not oh, Venus. <laughs> what was he? Shot. Shot in Abba blue. <laughs> no, not Abba, but something even before Abba. Look at the guy. There was, was nothing Jason's pre Abba I know. from the, the Netherlands. Spotniks. <laughs> <laughs> so many funny guys. We're saying, right we're saying, uh, but, uh, like this guy, I mean, of course what he's doing is ludicrous, but in view of the other stuff. He wants an alimony settlement. An alimony settlement, yeah. And then she gets Marvin Mitchelson, the guy that's been raking all the guys. Guys over yeah. the coast, you know, for this lapel yeah. and stuff. Oh, oh! Well, we're just about out of Jeez. time. Uh, that was about 28 minutes. That worked pretty good. Uh, but the deal is now, a lot of gals aren't getting married now. The uh, Goldie Hawns and so and so, the Priscilla Presley, because they don't want to get stuck with a guy maybe suing them for money. See? Well, they can still get sued, can't they? Palimony. I guess. Just for living, I think. It's yeah, but they yeah. can't. Let's see, let's see. What's her name? Presley doesn't want anybody round, round that. Oh, that dough, man. You That's know, what like, I'm like, saying. Like, mm. But guys don't have that option. No, I don't you know, want to marry you. Oh, she can, she can marry him with an arrangement. Have you, you know, seen that one, one of these snakes of the pop is coming up here trying to get, you know. <laughs> Who was a Latino lover guy? <laughs> 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 She loves to watch. She loves to make herself known. She loves to watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if 